where do you see the sources of global growth coming from, particularly in the developed world? We know growth will be driven by the developing world, we know it'll be driven by China and Indonesia. But what I see as I move around is that there's a lot of cashed up companies and they're not using that cash to invest in long-term productivity enhancing, capacity enhancing investments which will drive global growth. A lot of that cash is being used to invest in speculative activity. Uh, you know, the London property market, the list goes on. What policies do you see in the developed world that can further encourage these pools of capital to be productively invested for the long term in a job creating way, rather than diverted, uh, particularly by rent seekers who are, who are seeking to avoid their fair, of tax, their fair share of tax, particularly say in mining. Uh, what sort of policies do you think that we need more of in developed countries to make sure that this capital goes to long term growth enhancing investments rather than short term speculative capital gain? You mentioned profit shifting, that's certainly one of them, but there are many, there are many others. Yeah, so uh, let me uh, mention something else that your uh, previous government did right, I thought, uh, but which was not always uh, as politically popular. I think one of the real growth industries is uh, going to be uh, uh, renewable energy. Uh, that climate change is a reality and that we are beginning to appreciate it more and more. And let me say, it's not just global warming, it's weather variability. Uh, and uh, the, the cost of this is enormous. Uh, we've you know, recently studied done in the you know, US. Originally, in the climate change the debate in the United States, the United States had some ambivalence because uh, the South in the United States uh, would have suffered a great deal, but Minnesota would have become more livable. And so there was a trade-off, and most people were saying, let the South go, and, and the really important part of the country would actually be better <laughs> off. So there was a debate about whether we would benefit from, climate, from global warming or not. We now realize that that's totally wrong way of phrasing it. The cost to the U.S. of the weather variability has been absolutely enormous. Already. And, already, mm -hmm. and, and it will get worse. So, um, I think that, that being ahead of the game is really important. And if you had a carbon price, it would motivate firms to invest, and this, if we had a global carbon price, even more so, to invest in retrofitting the economy. The whole global economy has to be retrofitted to reflect the new scarcity that we hadn't fully appreciated before. So that, that's one very important uh, area. From uh, the point of view of, of uh, you know, th this is not just uh, new energy creating, uh, new, new, new uh, uh, electricity generators. We're talking about redesigning our cities. We're talking about uh, redesigning our buildings. It's a really big project that we ought to be engaged in. And that, that would be an enormous source of demand for investment that would really be, a, 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 I think, a key uh, provider of growth. So again, it's not that we ought to wait until recovery to begin this agenda. This could be an important part of the recovery agenda, the economic recovery, uh, economic recovery agenda. Uh, there are lots of other investments in technology, uh, it is quite striking that I think, you know, going back to a question about technology, we've been drawing down the pool of basic research. If you look at a lot of the innovations, they're really putting into place advances that occurred 20, 30, 40 years ago. The number of new, take pharmaceuticals, the number of basic new drugs is almost drop to zero, and, uh, and you see that, you know, all the old drugs are, are coming off patent, and nothing replacing them, uh, except occasionally an evergreening of an old patent, <laughs> but not new ideas. So, so I think um, in terms of, of a growth strategy, I think we ought to be investing more in basic research and you can't tell where that's going to go, but it's very clear in the past 
that that basic research has generated lots of new ideas that have led to new investments. And that's fine if you're a privately owned company, but companies that are out there that are uh, looking at the share market, they're, they're seeking to pursue strategies which inflate their share price in the short term, which lead them away from the long-term investment strategies that are needed. So what do you think are the policy changes that are required uh, oh, to, to encourage those people away from their short-term speculative behaviour to long-term investment? So I, th I think there are two policy changes. One is uh, there are some important changes in corporate governance. And corporate governance now encourages a focus on short-termism. And there are some interesting ideas that some of my colleagues at Columbia have been working on called loyalty shares where voting rights of corporation are in proportion to how long you hold the shares. If you're, if, if you're a short-term investor, you have relatively little say. If you're a long-term investor, you have a lot more uh, say. So I think that would be a change in governance, corporate governance, which would signal that we believe that long-term investment is really what people, firms ought to be thinking about, not their quarterly returns. A second thing, that would complement that is uh, a financial transaction tax. Because much of the activity that goes on in the financial market is a game. You know, when you're betting you know, uh, whether the stock market is going up, you win, I lose. It's a zero sum game. It isn't really, all that short term trading doesn't enhance the productivity of our economy. Now, in the United States, We've taken that to an extreme. I don't know where Australia is. Uh, what? Folly. Uh, but this flash trading is, uh, 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 I have argued, I have a paper that I've, I, I gave at the uh, Federal Reserve in Atlanta, uh, arguing that that has negative effects on our economy, not just zero, but negative. Because basically what these flash trading are doing are very sophisticated front running. And uh, what that means is that those who really do the investment in long term thinking, you know, where is the steel industry going to go? Where is this industry going to go? As soon as they figure it out, the flash traders can get their information, beat them, take out their profits. And so it under it, it, it takes away the profits from people who are trying to think long term. So that's why I think a financial transaction tax is really important. Chris, do you, I mean, you're, you're in boardrooms. You're talking to people and trying to, in, in part, you know, revive some, some stronger connections there for us. Is there an appetite in, in parts of business or, in, or, a, or a growing appetite or an awareness in Australia that there's benefits uh, for, for the economy as a whole and benefits for shareholders and benefits for owners in, in a more enlightened version of self-interest for them? Yeah, I think there is. I think there is. Um, obviously, it's patchy, um, <laughs> uh, but there are there are some deep thinkers in the corporate world yeah. who, um, without going through names, yeah, who, sure. who 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 could, could very well look and easily engage in this conversation, mm. uh, whether it be the, about the tax base mm. and their their belief that either individually or in a corporate fashion they should be paying more, or about the importance of innovation and investment in renewable energy and, the, and how a market-based mechanism is the right approach mm -hmm. for environmental reasons but also for economic reasons, as Joseph so eloquently outlined. So I, I do believe that there is some potential there, in the Australian context at least, uh, for that conversation to be had with corporate Australia. Mm. Let me just c comment on that. Uh, Davos, every year, they, they do a survey of what are the business leaders think are the major issues. And in recent years, the number, the two top issues have pretty consistently been climate change and inequality. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if these issues are not part of their mindset. Now, these are mostly European uh, business leaders, not American business leaders. And there is a difference between business leaders in the two. And, and uh, Australia is somewhere in between, I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> But at least uh, there, are, there are a lot of, of business leaders who, who, who really would understand much of what we would say, but they would also say, our hands are tied under the current framework. Sure. I have to do certain things because of, you know, I have a responsibility to my shareholders. If we could change the legal framework, 
then I would uh, have to behave differently. But under the current framework, uh, uh, we're induced to behave in ways that we think are not in the long range.